Pastor Kimberly Malloy, co-pastors Convergence Church in West Fork, Ohio, United States with her husband, Pastor Daniel Malloy. She is an artist embodied with artistic prophetic drawings that silently tell the story of what is in God's heart for his people on the earth. She walks in the prophetic calling and edifies the saints by the word of God to radiate the shining light of God's glory while they live on earth. If I'm not walking in his light, how is his glory going to be seen upon me? It is his glory in his light that is seen upon me, that is seen through me, that is revealed through my, my eyes, that is revealed through my, my words and my actions and my love for others. Eugene Peterson said, Churches should not just be places that welcome artists, but that communicate their need for artists. This is a subtle distinction, but sometimes churches can have the appearance of being artist-friendly, but are content for artists to do their own thing, or little decorative projects that do not affect the, the core of the church. Artists should be at the core, not the fringe. They keep the church faithful to the mission through their prophetic witness. Let's now welcome Pastor Kimberly Malawi to teach us on how to worship God through art and to encourage the artists that are out there and that thought they never had a meaning. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Yes. This is the time and this is the day and this is the hour and we just magnify the name of the lord and praise him i have been waiting for this day <laughs> pastor kimberly Malloy is one person that i love very much and uh, that has a very contagious glorious smile <laughs> and uh, she is multi-gifted and the lord is using her in such amazing ways that uh, i have personally witnessed and i've been watching over the years and something that has specifically drawn me uh, more closer and closer and closer to her is her gift and her talent of drawing. And I've been following her pictures and they have inspired me in, in a way. And they have inspired me prophetically. And some of the times that I get to see these pictures, uh, actually the pictures confirm to the word of God that I've received in that season. And sometimes I've really never communicated to her about how her pictures have been speaking to me. But how her pictures have been speaking to me is the reason why today she is here speaking about art. Because the impact and the influence that her drawings have created in my life is really one thing that we must consider, more especially with the artists that are located in our different ministries and in our different churches. Because as leaders in the Church of Christ, we are so much focused on these visible tal talents and giftings that are used in the church, more especially the, the, the known talents that are needed in the church, 
more than the others. So we look at maybe you have the gift of prophecy, maybe you can join the worship team, or maybe you can be a deacon, an usher. So th there are these uh, common known giftings or callings that people have in their lives that we quickly align ourselves with and give them avenue to be able to be tapped into in the ministry. But then we sideline other giftings and one of the gifts that I feel has not been utilized in the church so much, yet it is a great tool that the Lord uses to minister and speak to his people is the gift of art. And the church has really neglected the gift of art so much and particularly I want to speak about the church in Africa. It is so rare to see artists drawing in our churches, in our ministries, as worship is going on. It, it's really, I've never seen any yet in Africa. I've never seen it in Uganda. I don't know if it is happening in other parts of Africa, but I've never seen it in Uganda. Wow. But because of that, the church is missing a lot. And there's so much that the Lord is speaking through art that we are not able to hear and as a result we are never fulfilled in that part as a ministry and as individuals and as a church and yet some of these pictures actually have the message that will bring about our healing our deliverance our breakthroughs our jobs and all the things that we are praying and trusting god for and who can i trust other than pastor kimberly malloy <laughs> to come and empower us in that path to bring an understanding and revelation how art can impact us because the world has tapped into it the world has realized and seen the impact art can bring to the environment and to people and to people's hearts destinies and and, and 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 every area of their lives the world has seen it and they have tapped into it. That is why if you go to art galleries, art pieces are very, very expensive because the world now knows the value, but it's like the church does not really know the value of art. And as a result, we have never recognized how powerful it is. I just want to encourage all of you who are listening tonight. And if you can even invite someone, I already feel the presence of the Lord, that this is one moment that you do not want to miss in your life. This is one moment that you do not want to miss in your life. And I personally count myself privileged to be able to host Pastor Kimberly Malloy here today. So Pastor Kimberly Malloy, you are welcome. And the platform is yours. Thank you. Thank Amen. you so much. It is a joy to be here. Uh, we love you and your wife, your family so much. And still one of these days, we are going to be there. I, I hold on to that. I, we, one of these days, we are going to yes. be there. And uh, minister yes. alongside of you there. And, uh, you know, I just pray and ask God, make a way, make a way. Um, I thank you for this opportunity just to glorify God. That is, that is my life's focus. Glorify God as it should be for all of us. Um, I pray Amen. that we see a, a movement of art, Christ-centered art, begin there in Uganda. May it begin even today. May hearts be ignited yeah. even today. Yeah. May God begin to unlock yeah. gifts that he's yes. placed in people even today to create for him. And to draw people into his presence through what he um, creates through people. May visions and dreams become, um, be awakened even in people today. May it happen even today. And so I just pray that as we talk about this today, that God begins to cause people's hearts to just burn for him. May they just burn for him. And may those visions Amen. and those dreams be awakened and may those gifts that he's placed in them be awakened and may their desire for that gift be to glorify God in all that they do. And I just ask you, Lord, to do these things in Jesus mighty name. Amen. 
Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess I so will you can jump in and begin talking about, uh, you know, what God has done through this. It's a story that I love to tell because it's all about him. And, um, you know, I just, Amen. I, uh, you know, this, this, let me say that um, art. Well, first off, let me say art. You know, if you look into the world, and you look at the art world um, and you ask people who enjoy art, who follow art, who invest in art, and you ask them why they invest in a piece of art and they'll tell you because it moves them. You know, there's something about that piece that makes them feel something. And that's why they invest in it. And so knowing that and knowing that God is our creator, you know, and all things created are created by him, and um, beautiful artwork that glorifies him can cause a person to be moved in such a way that they're drawn into his presence or drawn into a desire to, to know him more, to know him deeper, or, or to, to, to know him for the first time. You know, art, music, all of that causes us to have um, an attachment of sorts or to feel something. And, um, you know, the way I see it is we've allowed the enemy too much access and too much hold in our, in our um, arts field, you know, in making art, creating art, creating music, any form of arts, you know, the enemy has, has definitely had his his time in that. And I think it's time that, you know, the artists for God, you know, God's artisans begin to arise and create art that is going to glorify him and draw people into his presence. And so I truly believe that this is just a beginning. We're going to see it so much more. And it's going to begin to happen and to be awakened. So, um, you know, we talk. The topic here is talking about worshiping God through art, and you know the mystery of that, and and how do you do it, and how does it start? And and I have to say that for me. I was already a worshiper. I am, I am a worshiper. I love to worship God. Um, I love to spend time in his presence. I love to um, sing to him. Um, I love to, you know, pick up flags and, and flag in his presence and, you know, just wave banners in his presence. And, and, um, and I love that. I, you know, that's just so much of, of who I am as, as a, a believer and as one of his daughters is, is to be a worshiper. And I think we have to start there. We have to have a heart of worship. And, you know, that's, that's crucial. And that's in anything that we do, in any, any gifting that the Lord gives us, whatever that might be, um, is to have that heart of worship. And so that's... Um, that's where I start. That's where this whole story starts is in that heart of worship and that desire that no matter what I'm doing is glorifying him. You know, I noticed that you had shared a clip of a video that I had done here one morning when the Lord had laid something on my heart and it was all about worship. It was all about glorifying him. And that truly is my desire, regardless what it, what it is I'm doing. And every piece of art that I create, um, I pray, Lord, may you be glorified in this. And, you know, and part of that is help me, Lord, to create this with excellence, to show your excellence, Lord, but also so that people may know and be drawn into your presence because it glorifies him. And, uh, you know, one of my favorite Psalms I want to read is Psalms um, 19, 1 through 6. And when I read that, I can see a, a painting unfolding in front of me. 
Um, and I'll just read it. And, you know, if, if you're listening, I just encourage you to close your eyes and allow the Lord to show you a picture of what this looks like. Because to me, it it's just I can see him painting a picture while I read this scripture every time. And the scripture says, the heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day, they pour forth speech. Night after night, they reveal knowledge. They have no speech. They use no words. No sound is heard from them. Yet their voice goes out into all the earth. Their words to the end of the world. In the heavens, God has pitched a tent for the sun. It is like a bridegroom coming out of his chamber and like a champion rejoicing to run his course. It rises at one end of the heavens and it makes its circuit to the other. Nothing is deprived of its work, warmth. So that scripture to me is just one of many that um, when I read it, I can see it in picture and I can, I can see, you know, like I said, I can see almost as if God is painting a picture while I read that, you know, and that's part of that wonder and that awe of God that I think that um, much of the church around the world has lost. We've lost this, this wonder of God, this awe of him, you know, we've allowed our, our walk with him. We've allowed our, our um, church life to just kind of become the mundane. And there is nothing about God that is mundane. I mean, when we allow the scripture to come alive to us, when we allow ourselves the wonder, that childlike wonder to arise in us, the, the word becomes alive to us and we can see in picture, you know, um, you know, God paints so many pictures in his scripture. So often he uses analogies, you know, to paint a picture of what it is he's saying. You know, and the way the way I see it is that creating art is just another form of that. It's creating a picture of what God is saying. You know, most of us, well, all of us, all human beings are, are visual. You know, we're all visual. We're all created to to see and to to learn in in visual means. You know, if I um if I say a uh, purple chicken ran across the barnyard, all of you will be able to see in your mind a purple chicken running across the barnyard. It's because we're visual beings and God has created us that way. You know, and he's given us this this beautiful ability as his children to enter into his presence and enter into and peer into his very heart you know and to peer into the heavens and the heavenlies and and to see what it is that he's showing us you know jesus said i do what i see the father doing and you know so we have that ability as well to see what it is the father's doing and that's in that abiding relationship with him in that intimate relationship you know creating art creating music writing songs and poetry and books and things like that all of those things come from that that intimate place with the lord you know that that time where we just come into our presence and and um you know sometimes we maybe we lean we lean back upon his chest you know as it says that john did in the bible john he, he let he um leaned back against his chest and it's in those times and those moments of of intimacy with the lord and those quiet times those times that we're searching and and we draw near to him that he begins to open up, you know, our eyesight, our sight, our spiritual sight to see into the heavenlies, to peer into his heart, to see what it is he's saying. And, um, you know, I don't know. I, you know, I hear that 
I'm so new to art and I'm going to tell you my journey here in, in a minute. I'm so new to this, but in a way I can, I can, I can look back at my childhood and see how I saw this way. You know, artists will say, I see things differently. And, you know, when we go outside, we say, we see different shades of green on the tree or, you know, we see even different shades of brown, you know, on the, on the, on the ground. And, you know, all these different things, we see things so differently. And, you know, and I can remember as a little girl, you know, my favorite place to be, I grew up in the country on a farm and then my favorite place to be was outdoors. It was, it was in the woods, it was out among the trees and it was in, in nature because I felt connected to God there. I felt close to him there. Um, you know, even though I didn't have a full understanding of who he was or anything, I believed in him. And that was my, that was my safe place, my peaceful place. And, you know, and I can understand now more um, why that was my safe place, why I felt so connected to him. And it was just, you know, the gift that he had placed in me that I didn't even know about then. And, um, but it was still there, you know, so, so I want to talk to you a little bit about my journey with it and where it began, what it began with and, um, and why I believe God is, has just opened this door. And so I want to take you back to November, 2017, and, you know, God in November 2017, he put um, the scripture, Jeremiah 33, just in my spirit. And that scripture is, call to me and I will answer you. And I will show you great and mighty things that you do not know. And that scripture, I just, I just dove into that scripture and that scripture became not that the scripture became my destination but that that place of of searching and that place of intimacy with the lord that became my destination you know lord i'm i'm calling to you i'm leaning into you i am searching for you um because i want to know you more i want to know more about you he says you know i'll show you great and mighty things that you do not know and, and so I wanted to know that I wanted to know more about him and who he is and, and who I am in him. So, so that's where this journey actually began was November, 2017. And then following that, as I began searching him and the scriptures out in December, 2017, I had two very significant dreams that, um, would be very relevant to this journey with the art. But even, even now, even now as, as Daniel and I have stepped into, you know, the lead pastorate position at our church, these dreams I still hold on to because I know that they were from the Lord and they were to encourage us and to lead us as we are following him. Cause it was all about following him. Um, you know, I'm not going to go into the dreams in particular and in detail, but, you know, one of the dreams, the first dream was all about following him as he led and he was leading up a mountain, mountain into places that I had not gone before and places I would not go on my own, but he led and he just simply said, follow me, keep your eyes on me and follow me. The second dream was I was walking in a schoolyard with him in his beautiful gardens at a school and and in every place we looked there was something that he was showing me and he was teaching me about those things so out of those two dreams it was keep your eyes on me and follow me and i will teach you that's what i will do and so then in January of 2018, January 8th to be exact, we were at a worship service one evening at our church. And it was during the, the worship section of the service because um, it was a worship and a prayer service. And so while we were just in worship, I remember kneeling at the altar and I remember the Lord had showed me this vision of the angels or the, the four living creatures tipping the bowls of incense and prayers, you know, and I remember all I could see was their hands in the bowls and, you know, in their robes and, and they were tipping these bowls. 
And immediately, and, and that scripture is Revelation 5, 8. You can find that. You can read that there. Immediately when I saw this vision, I heard the Lord speak to me and he said to me, will you draw what I show you? Now, remember what he just showed me. He just showed me this, this vision, this glimpse into heaven, this glimpse into what was going on in the throne room. Just a glimpse of what was happening in the throne room. And, he, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm imagining this, this vision that he just given me. And now he's saying, I want you to draw what I show you. And I, I said, Lord, I, I can't draw. And um, before I go on, I want to interject here just something that I want you to understand about my life. You know, I, from a little girl, I always desired to draw. I've always been um, drawn to pencil art, you know, like some of the stuff behind me, the pencil art, graphite art, charcoal art. Just, it always amazed me what artists could do with a pencil or just a few pencils, you know, with different lead. It amazed me. I was just in awe of what artists could do with just pencils. And so I can remember as a little girl, I would, I would try drawing, I would draw cartoon characters and, um, I would try drawing horses all the time because I love horses. And, you know, as a little girl, horses were my thing. And so I was always trying to draw horses, you know, and, and I got, I was decently good at those things. You know, I had the basics down of, of those things. I mean, I could draw a horse's head, could not do the body, could not do people, None of that, nothing complex could I draw. You know, I tried a few times. It was like, Whoa, that's bad. Don't do it. Um, but I had always had that desire. But it's not something that I pursued. Um, I think I had an art class in elementary school, you know, that everybody took. But after that, I didn't pursue art. I didn't pursue any classes. I did not take any classes. I've not had any training, no instruction nothing. And it was actually a desire of my heart that I just kind of pushed back to the, to the back burner of my heart because, you know, life just happened. And, you know, I made some choices in my life that took me in a way different direction than that. And so it just became something that I just really forgot about, you know, and at times in my life, periodically, it would come, pop back up. You know, when the kids were little, maybe I would sit down and draw with them or something. So it, periodically it would pop back up, but still nothing that I would pursue. Now let's go back to January 8th in 2018. Um, the Lord simply, when I argued with him, when I said, Lord, I can't draw. He very simply restated his, his question. Will you draw what I show you? And again, I'm thinking of this vision and, I'm, and I said, Lord, I can't. I can't draw. I can't draw that. So then he being God and knowing how to, you know, to stop me, he, um, he says, can I do anything? And I said, yes, Lord, you can do anything. And he said, um, can I draw through your hands if you'll let me? And so then I said, well, Yes, you can do that. So I gave him my yes that night. I said, yes, Lord, I will draw for you. And so then that began my journey of that year, him teaching me how to draw, what he was showing me. And starting out, it was very elementary. I'll say it that way. It was very elementary when I first started drawing for him. And he started me out drawing hands, which is one of the hardest things to draw in the human body. And I argued with him on that and said, Lord, you know, these are the hardest, the hands are the hardest thing to draw in the human body. Why are you starting me there? And it was basically like, if I can, if I can teach, teach you how to draw this, I can teach you how to draw anything. Okay, Lord, I trust you. You know, it was always this trust relationship. It was always this journey of trust. I trust you, Lord. And so for that first year, he was my teacher. Holy Spirit was my teacher. I was not allowed to take any kind of classes, watch any kind of instructional videos or anything. Anytime that I would get stumped on something, I would say, Lord, can I just watch a video to see how to do this? And he'd say, no, trust me. 
And so, you know, that night I would have a dream and in the dream I could see how it needed to be done. Or, you know, when I picked up the drawing and began working on it again, he would, I, it's like, I could see the lines and the shading happening in front of me. And I just began to draw what I saw. He was literally guiding me in this process and showing me how to draw what it was he was showing me. It was, um, even now, <laughs> the most amazing thing that I've ever had witnessed or been a part of and to that point, you know, where it's like, God, you're just, you're here right now and you're showing me how to do this. And, and it just amazed me that, that he could do that. You know, you read in the word that he can do all these things, but when you see it happening right in front of you, it just, it just does something. It, you know, it increases your faith to believe that he truly can do whatever it is he says he's going to do. And there's such a strength of foundation in that, just to know that no, no matter what he says he's going to do, he can do it. If we'll have faith and we'll trust in him and we'll keep our eyes on him. So, you know, he would, um, my prayer became whatever it was he was asking me to draw, you know, if it was, you know, a human form, an animal form, a plant form, whatever, something that he has created and he's asking me to draw it or to paint it, I would say, Lord, you created this. Show me how to draw it or show me how to paint it. Like you're the creator of this. So who else would I go to, to, to learn how to paint this or to draw this, but to you. And so that became, and it still is my prayer because the Lord still likes to give me things and challenge me uh, to do things that I've never done before and to paint them or draw them for someone else. And it's something that is going to go somewhere else. Like right now I have a massive canvas in this room that's going to go in our church. And some of the things that's going on this canvas are things that I've not painted before. Um, but again, I'll trust the Lord and say, Lord, help me. You know, you created this. So you show me how to, how to paint it for your glory, Lord. Um, you know, and it just goes back to in Exodus 31, two through five, the Lord equips those that he calls when he calls someone to a work, whatever that work is, he equips that person with everything that they need to accomplish that, that assignment, that call, whatever that is. And in Exodus three, two through five, I want to read it because it says, see, I have called by name, but Bez Bezello, probably I'm mispronouncing some of these names, but hang with me. The son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. And I have filled him with the spirit of God in wisdom, in understanding, in knowledge, and in all kinds of craftsmanship to create artistic designs for work in gold, in silver, and in bronze and in the cutting of stones for settings and in the carving of wood so that he may work in all kinds of craftsmanship. And, and when you read that passage, they're creating, they're working on, they're building the temple according to God's um, blueprints, you know? Uh, so if someone were to say art, there's no place for art in the church I would beg to differ and I would send them to Exodus. You know, God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He would not care about artistic design in his temple in the Old Testament, but not care about it today. You know, God is, is a creator of artistic design, you know, that's done for him, for his glory. It comes from him. And so he still loves that. He is a creator and he loves to create and we are co-creators with him. What an honor that we get to create through the ability that he's given us, what he's showing us. I mean, what an honor, you know? And then 1 John 2 through 227 reads, and as for you, the anointing which you receive from him remains in you and you have no need for anyone to teach you 
but as his anointing teaches you about all things and is true and is not a lie. And just as it has taught you, you remain in him. So he teaches you. He is our teacher and he still teaches today. You know, we have wonderful teachers. We have wonderful, you know, apostles and pastors and, and teachers and prophets, you know, and all those things that um, God has given us. Those are gifts, you know, and the people who operate in those gifts are gifts to the body to teach us, to edify us, to build us up, to strengthen us. But we can't forget that God is our teacher as well. He gave us Holy Spirit, who is a teacher. He is our teacher. And um, I love to tell people that even now, even these days, that um, Holy Spirit still teaches us. He still teaches and, and shows us how to do things for his glory. It's all for the glory of the Son of God. It's all for the glory of Jesus. Um, so the artwork, every picture, every painting, every picture I've drawn, every painting I've painted has come from a time of worship, you know, that I've done for him. Yeah, you know, I, I've, I've done commissions for other people and those are those are things that I've just done for them because they've asked me to. But the things that the Lord gives me, those all come from a time of worship, a time of intimacy with him. And um, it's when I connect to his heart that he shows me something from his heart. And, you know, every piece is inspired by Holy Spirit. And it is it comes with a message from the heart of the Father. And the intention of that with every picture drawn, every painting painted for God is to draw people into a relationship with him. You know, to draw people into an understanding that there's a deep place in him that he wants to draw us to. You know, he wants to draw us into his very bosom, into the heart of God. And he wants to draw us into, into there, into his heart. You know, because it's there, it's in his heart that we receive revelation of him, of his goodness and his love, his overwhelming love. And it's there that we are transformed into his likeness. And we are given the... Um, ability because we're transformed to be more like him and to love like him to share the message that we receive while we're in that place of, of intimacy that secret place with him and we we come out of that change you know we come out of that place um ourselves being changed but we always come out of that place with a message and either it's a message for us personally or it's a message for us to share it's always for us personally and whatever message we receive in there is always for us as an individual but it sometimes is for us to share for others um but god's always going to give us something in there to change us to make us more like him to make us more christ-like um and so when when I get this picture, when I get the vision of what he's showing me to draw or to paint, sometimes I'll get the message with it immediately. Sometimes I won't. Sometimes I'll get the picture and I'll begin drawing it or, or painting it, whatever that might be. I'll begin working on it. And as I'm working on it, he begins to unfold the message and he begins to show me the scriptures that go along with that. And, um, Usually by the time I'm done with the drawing or the painting, I have the message with it. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I have to ponder those, those messages, those paintings, those drawings. I have to ponder those times and in in, in, in stay in that secret place and ask him, Lord, what is this? What are you showing me? What is your message? You know, and it'll come. It'll come out of those times in those secret places. You know, one of the paintings that, that you showed in that intro video was of a um, colorful tree. And I have that here somewhere. I'm not even sure. Oh, it's in the other room. Um, it's a colorful tree. And that tree, that painting came out of a, a time of worship where I was, I heard the word family. 
And God was showing me the family, the body of Christ, the family, his family. And this family all over the world. We're all family. We're all brothers and sisters in the kingdom of God. We're all his sons and daughters. And, and it's beautiful. This family of God is, is absolutely stunning. It's, it's extraordinary. It's, you know, multicultural, multiracial. It's, that's it right there. It is a tree of many colors. You know, um, Joseph had a coat of many colors. Well, this is a tree of many colors and it was to show and exemplify the beauty of God's family. And, um, and those rooted, rooted in him. That was the name of this painting is rooted because we're rooted in him, but we're all one in the body in Christ. And so that's just an example of, you know, what, what a time like this is with the Lord and how, how I worship him through art. Um, so, you know, the mystery of worshiping God through art, well, it's really not a mystery. It's we, we, we seek the Lord and we draw near to him in an abiding relationship, you know, and then when he asks us to do something for him, we give him our yes. But we must stay humble in that gift and we must always surrender that gift to him and asking him to help us glorify him through it. So he gives us the gift, but we always need to stay humble and say, Lord, here's the gift that you've given me. Help me to glorify you in it. You know, here's my hands. Here's my feet. Here's my mouth. You know, whatever it is that you have given me, whatever gift it is, help me to glorify you in it. And, you know, so how can we glorify God through art? Well, the testimony of what he's done through it. You know, the testimony of what he does through an artist who surrendered to him. Um, you know, this testimony of this journey with him through the art of going from, you know, piece to piece to piece and and seeing the um, the skill grow as I lean on him and I trust in him. And uh, just what he's been able to do through that and just this the the testimony of spending time with him, the testimony of of visions and dreams coming and messages coming through the art and how it changes, you know, the person as an artist and, um, and how, you know, he causes you to flourish in that, you know, at the beginning, um, I wouldn't call myself an artist. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't allow myself to identify as an artist because in my mind, you know, an artist was somebody who had pursued art. An artist was somebody who had gone to school for art. An artist was somebody who probably was still paying off debt from, from the school of art that they had gone to. You know, an artist was somebody who uh, was had work hanging in museums. You know, I, I had this worldly mindset of what art was and what an artist was. But then God had to remind me that, no, he, he that's a gift from him, you know, and artists they have that gift because he's given it to them whether they're using it for him or not that's still an ability and a skill that god has given them he put that in them god created each and every one of us and he said you know i knew you before i put you in your mother's womb and so god knew the gifts and the abilities and the skills and everything that he was going to put in each and every one of us before he put us in our mother's womb so you know, the artists out there, they may not be using that gift for God, but that's who it comes from. And, uh, you know, so testimonies are the one way we can glorify God and worship God through our art. You know, another way is simply just through the beauty of what's created. Um, you know, the stories of what I, I hear in those times of just sitting with God and hearing out of his hearing from his heart and getting glimpses and visions of what's in there. And then being able to tell those stories through pictures, um, is simply, simply amazing. And then one of my favorite ways to worship the Lord in, in my art and to glorify him is when he gives me 
pictures, drawings, paintings, whatever it might be, to do for someone that they don't even know about. Um, one of them uh, is a, a picture that I drew for a woman in our church. And it came from the very first day she came to our church. She's probably watching now. Um, if not now, she will be later. But anyway, on that very first day, um, the Lord, Spirit of the Lord was all over her. And she received Christ as her Savior that day. And um, I was sitting with her and praying with her. And the, just the peace of God fell on her that day. Like she's never experienced in her life. And I just asked the Lord, Lord, will you show me? what she looks like to you right now. And he gave me this picture of her as a little girl sitting in the palm of his hand, reading a book with a red balloon. And so she had no idea that I was asking that question. She had no idea this picture that I had seen of her. And so I just began to draw it and um, I drew it. And then, you know, I gave her a framed uh, copy of that drawing. And, and she wept and she said, how did you know what I look like when I was about five years old? How awesome is that? That literally God was showing me what she looked like as a little girl, you know, but sitting in the palm of his hand and red balloon was her favorite. So that's what I'm talking about. The beauty of the Lord that we can worship him and move in, change, in opportunities like that, moments like that and impact other people's lives to be a part of that so humbling so humbling you know other times um there was a, a woman who lost her mom and she had posted a picture of her and, and her mom holding hands and and lord put it on my heart to draw that so I just drew that and mailed it to her and another little girl a friend of mine whose daughter lost her best friend who was her, her horse and who died suddenly in the night. And she had posted this picture of her little girl with her horse, the horses who died suddenly in the night, not the little girl. But the um, again, the Lord put that on my heart and I just drew her with that, with her horse and sent it to them. And um, I always send them with whatever message it is the Lord sends me to, gives me to send to them. And I let them know this is from him because he loves you. You know, and then another one, um, this picture right behind me of two siblings right there in Uganda, um, a, a couple that have a home for children, uh, posted that picture and the Lord put that on my heart. And uh, so I drew that and um, we shared it and we shared their story because they were, they were living on the streets and they didn't have a home. And so we, we shared that drawing and with a picture of them and their story and within 48 hours, they both had sponsors and are living in that home. And to know that just through a drawing and just through saying yes to God and giving this gift to him, that I could be a part of that. I mean, why would we not want to do whatever it is that God is asking us to do? Because it impacts people, it affects their lives. He gets to move in their lives and he gets to move in the lives of others to help other people. And that that's a beautiful thing. And um, again, just that I get to be a part of that. It's just so, so humbling. So when we get to use that gift that goes and it touches other people's lives, and it touches their heart from God and they get to hear a message from God and they get to know that they got a gift from God. That's worship. That's worship. That is, that is using your life and using your gift and using your talents to worship God, the one who's worthy of it. And the one who can bring and effect change in people's lives, in the world, all around the world, distance does not matter because God is everywhere. And, um, you know, so when um, my encouragement would be for you is... Um, draw near to the Lord, draw near, 
like you've never drawn near before. Draw near to him. Get into his presence and draw near. Draw near to the heart of God and see what it is that he would have you do. You know, and if if you have a desire to draw or to paint, and maybe you do, you know, maybe you do already, or you have that desire, then ask God to, to awaken that gift to be used for him. But it has to be used for him. It has to, you have to always humbly surrender that gift because the danger is, is pride coming in. And you no longer exalt the Lord in your gift, you're exalting yourself. Um, we must always glorify the Lord in our, in our work and what we do. And so draw near to him. Know that the arts are created for his church and for the world to see him through them. Um, I just encourage all of you to, to enter in and, and ask the Lord what it, is, what it is he would have you do for him. And then do it with everything in you and uh, use it all for his glory and worship him in everything that you do. So that is the journey and that is um, how I worship the Lord in, in the art and through the art and how I glorify him through it. And I'm still in awe even today after three and a half years that I get to create beautiful things for his glory. And that's what it's all about. <laughs> so that's it. So if Paul, if you have any questions or anything for me, let me know and I'll see if I can answer them. I don't know if you have questions or comments in your comment section. I have no idea. But if there are any, let me know. But I think um, while I'm waiting for Paul to come back in, I think I'll pray. All right. So if we can all close our eyes, I thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to glorify you. I thank you for the gifts that you have given us, Lord, whatever those gifts are. I ask you, Lord, that you would ignite the passion in the artists all around the world to create art for you that will glorify you, that will draw not only them into a deeper relationship with you, Lord, but will draw others into a deeper relationship with you. Lord, that goes for musicians and, and singers and songwriters and poets and um, writers, Lord. All forms of the art, Lord. There's, there's, there's woodmakers and stonecutters just like in Exodus. Lord, you have created it. You've created us to create with you, Lord. So I ask you that you would awaken that gift in us and you would show us, Lord, what it is that we can do for you and how to do it. I thank you that you send Holy Spirit, who is our teacher. He's so much more than that, Lord, but he is a teacher to us. And so I thank you that we have Holy Spirit to guide and to lead and direct us. We thank you for your wisdom and your knowledge, Lord, to operate in the gifts that you've given us according to your will and according to your ways, Lord. May we always desire to glorify you, Lord. May we always stay humble in the gifts that you've given us. May our desire always be to glorify you. May our lives be in worship to you. Every aspect of our lives, Lord, may it be in worship to you. May we do all to worship you, Lord. May the words that we speak from our mouths glorify you and be in worship to you, Lord. May our actions and our love, Lord, worship you and glorify you in all that we do, Lord. Lord, I just ask for your words, your messages to arise in the hearts of men and women all around the world today, Lord. Cause our hearts to burn for you, Lord. Cause our desire to go deep with you, Lord. Cause our desire to glorify you in all the world, Lord. May we arise, Lord, in your kingdom, according to your will and your ways, Lord and show the world just who you are. 
May we be lights in this darkness. May we be a reflection of Christ. That people might see Blessed. you, really Lord. Blessed. That people might see you, Father. That they might know you. That you might be glorified and they might be drawn into a relationship with you. And be reconnected and reunited with you, Father. And it is in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you. I see that you came back, but I think we froze. So we'll just wait a moment. I think we froze. All right. So I'm not sure what to do right now. Oh, there you are. Are you there? I think we're frozen. All right. Well, I think I will um, go ahead and log off for now. I thank you, Paul, for giving this, giving me this opportunity to talk to everyone about about the Lord. It's my favorite topic, <laughs> and uh, about what He's done and can do through the world of art and the gift of art. So, you know, if anybody has any questions, they are welcome to, you know, send me a message or um, ask and um, I will get back with them as fast as I can. Blessings, everyone. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. The network is not...